Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Oh well this is a bit different isn't it for an on the sofa chat? I'm not on the sofa, I'm dripping in the shed. Uh, you'll have seen, if I just put fluff onto my face, you'll have seen from the last video I was harvesting my calendula, doing a few bits and bobs and it's a scorchy old day and I was planning to multitask when I talk to you now but I've decided you know what no <laughs> I'm always multitasking <clears throat> excuse me and I'm going to do something which has been really really lacking both this year and last year uh, I'm going to just chill out in the garden I'm just moving things getting ready because yeah there's not there's not been I haven't had my deck chair out this year I mean, what is that about? Uh, you know, there, there, there have been so few occasions when we've had a gathering at the table outside the shed. We had that lovely gathering at the end of July last year for Paul's birthday. But of course, we were very much still in lockdown in our social bubbles. <clears throat> and I think it's interesting that... <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. I'm going to fix that in a second. Actually, let me fix it with water first. I think this summer that even though um <clears throat> hang on i think that's better yeah even though restrictions have lifted a lot i think people are still a little bit kind of wary and still just getting back into the habit of mixing a little bit but also frankly we've had a wet chilly summer <laughs> so yeah something that's been sorely missing this year is <laughs> I'm going to have a glass of Prosecco in the shed. I'm going to have my own little party. So I bought two bottles for my sister's visit. That's what I'm going to talk about in a second because we had a fantastic night out, out. And I really want to share that with you. Yeah, I bought two bottles for her visit and we only did one. What is wrong with us? So I thought, you know what? I'm going to bring it with me today. It's an incredibly beautiful, sunny, hot day it feels like summer again i feel like i missed this summer so i'm having this today by way of you know it's a little bit celebratory <laughs> the garden it hasn't been my best this year of course not i've already you know talked about that and why um but oh it's gonna go bang hang on <laughs> oh that's because it got rattled in the granny trolley let me set it down for a minute oh my hand's gonna be stinky boo's hand now hang on <laughs> emergency emergency loo roll let me just mop myself a bit yeah it's um what on earth was i saying um yeah the garden you know i've talked about this it hasn't been the best but 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 it is giving me stuff and whatever i'm just so grateful to have this space while my sister was here we did have the sunday afternoon down here in the garden which is when we had the one bottle of prosecco and her cousin cousin-in-law let's just call her cousin her cousin came and joined us later on and it was just so lovely to sit outside the shed in the sunshine having a few bubbles, relaxing, and it was so, 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 so quiet. Um, my sister finds my flat really noisy. It is. So it was absolutely bliss to come and sit here. So yeah, I'm, you know, it's not been the best garden year, but I've got a garden and that's what counts, isn't it? So I feel like I'm celebrating today to sort of celebrate the fact that I have a garden at all. The fact that despite my long absences this year, I mean that began in March and I missed the whole of March in the garden and all that prep time. I missed two weeks in April, I missed two weeks in May, <laughs> da da da, and so on, you know the story. Uh, despite all that, I've got this really pretty little garden that gives me food and it gives me so much pleasure 
and it's high time I take a moment to just be here and remember that. So, cheers to having a garden. Mmm, naughty. This was icy cold when I arrived this morning, about, uh, yeah, four hours ago. <laughs> it's, it's not icy cold. It's not warm. It'll do. So yeah, I feel like I'm celebrating the garden. In, in some ways, I suppose it's like my harvest festival, come early. Just the fact that I have this garden, the lovely friends I have here. When my sister and I were down here on Sunday afternoon, there were loads of other pot holders around. Everyone was in a really laid back, chilled mode because Sunday was our first really hot day again. And I think it just drawn everyone out of their houses and there was this just feeling of everyone's just floating around and folk came over and chatted and said hello to my sister and it's exactly what I love about this place apart from the veg. It's just that chilled friendships, conversations, loveliness. Mental note, make more time for it next year. And I suppose, another little sip, oh my goodness, with this heat and a bottle of Prosecco, I'm going to be off my trolley um, and I will turn the camera off before then. I think the other thing I'm sort of celebrating today is this was my first week in 18 months where I wasn't doing my Monday stuff. What day is it today? I think it's Tuesday today. Yeah, it's Tuesday. So yesterday, um, I didn't take a day off. I'm still catching up with lots and lots of things but I just felt like I just felt like such a such a weight had been lifted I knew I wasn't going to take the day off but what I did do was I or what should I say what I didn't do I didn't set my alarm normally I set my alarm for seven every morning hate getting up blah 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 I heard all that before um I didn't set my alarm, so I woke naturally. I think I'd gone to bed at about midnight on the Sunday, just a bit before, maybe half 11. I woke up naturally at 9.30. Oh my goodness. To wake up naturally is just beautiful and bliss, and I haven't done it for so long. It was gorgeous. And the thing is, waking up naturally I was in a much better mood. I felt more awake and alert much more quickly. So yeah, it was about, probably about 10 hours in bed in total. I woke a couple of times in the night, I pretty much always do. But for me to get 10 hours was just, oh, it's just dreamy. So yeah, cheers to that. Um, I am still playing catch up with a lot of things, that's fine. But now that I've freed up my Mondays again, I'm not necessarily going to say right now Monday is my day off, but what I might say to myself is Sunday, have Sunday off. Uh, I'm not very good at sitting still and doing nothing, but my per this, this today, what I'm doing today, this will be my perfect idea of a day off. Doing the calendula harvest. I might even have a little snooze in the shed later. Oh. Oh, but that's the whole reason I built a bed in the shed was so I could snooze on hot afternoons with the air just kissing my skin. Oh, oh, bliss, bliss, bliss. So maybe that's what I'll do is I'll say on Sunday I harvest flowers and kip in the shed. It's not quite a day off today because obviously I've been filming and that means going home and editing and doing all those things. But yeah. It feels like, it feels like such a weight has been lifted. And the thing, I, you know, I've, I've been reflecting on this a lot in the last few days, that um, where I got to at the beginning of this year, about mid-February, I finally felt like, ah, oh, now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. My plan is in place. I've now had the YouTube channel for long enough to know what work that entails 
I've had the shop long enough, I've done enough bits of sewing, okay now I see what the rhythm of my life is and how to use my days and how to use my days in depending on this season. I'd kind of got all that down <laughs> and then of course Auntie Teapot died so that that kind of threw everything out this year. So I think uh, this is what I was saying the other day about being excited for next year is you know I won't be dealing with all the Auntie Teapot stuff I won't be giving away my Mondays anymore. And, you know, it may get to the point where I can do that again, but not right now. Uh, so, yeah, I feel liberated. I feel, look, I'm looking forward to that. It's all really, really positive. I've even, looking at my schedule for this month, September, I've got to go down to teapots a bit more. But I've looked at my schedule and thought, wow, I think I'm going to have time to do some sewing this month. Yay! So, I mean, I don't need an excuse to have bubbles, but this is obviously, this is a luxury. I mean, it's not a luxury product. What's it say? Vino Spumante. <laughs> Spumante. Um, Trigger. Fools and Horses. But also Alison Steadman. Oh, I love Alison. Yeah, it was from Lidl. I think it was, I think it was six quid which is obviously for me that's quite a lot of money but hey it's a treat for my sister on to my sister um so we haven't seen each other for two years she was down two years ago a little bit earlier in the year around our birthdays because our birthdays are two days apart uh how long was she down like a couple of days or something a couple of nights whatever she got us tickets to see mama mia such fun this time she was down for a bit longer, but this was where it's really clever. I know that my sister finds my flat way too hot in the summer. It, I mean, it gets roasting up there, but more than that, it's really, really noisy. You know, she she lives in a really quiet little village on the edge of the North York Moors. My flat on a main road in London, bless her. I don't think she's ever had a night's sleep in my flat. So this time, what was really clever is she stayed with her cousin-in-law. It's her husband's cousin, but we'll just call her cousin, who lives actually just down the road from me. Well, 10 minutes on the bus, 10 minutes in a car, on the bus, whichever. Yeah, so in terms of, you know, knowing someone else in London, she's virtually my neighbour. So my sister stayed with her because she's got a nice big home. Uh, so that was perfect so on the first day she was here the two of them were out and about all day uh exploring over towards i think it's greenwich what was i doing friday i was doing something friday i can't remember what it was i was probably gardening and filming that's kind of what i'm always doing these days yay again and then friday night we went out out i'm gonna tell you about that separately in a second and then oh i'm gonna burp <laughs> bubbles are coming up on Saturday I was here in the morning for our work party and then in the afternoon doing a bit of cooking cleaning because my sister was visiting at the same time my sister was up in town meeting up with one of her old work friends they both used to work at the same place up north this friend they both left that workplace and the, her friend has moved recently moved to london to start a new job down here so how great so my sister went and met up with a dear friend of hers and then after they'd had their coffee cake whatever her friend had to disappear and then my sister just had a mooch uh because she did live here a long 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 time ago once upon a time so she had a mooch around and we were comparing notes later on. She's saying how much Covent Garden has changed. Everything is so slick and commercial and sanitised these days. A lot of those, like Neil's Yard, all those places that were always a little bit hippie and a bit arty. Mm. So she had a lovely time doing that. And then Sunday morning she came to me at the flat uh, where <laughs> we were just natter, 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 natter. She brought me a load of books to try. Uh, did I give her anything? To, oh yeah, I found a really beautiful book of 
knitting patterns, uh, but all Norwegian, really beautiful. So some of them were almost like we would think of for a fair isle pattern. Some of our sort of northern, northern, northern islands, as in Shetland, Orkney, some of the patterns that come from there, there you can you can sort of see maybe there was a bit of trading, but really gorgeous patterns. And I wasn't sure how much she's knitting these days, you know, time and all that. But she loved it, so we had a little bit of a book swap, um, a good natter. My sister always wears jewellery. She has really beautiful jewellery. It's all very simple, very simple, pared down, really elegant. She had on her bracelet. For, so if you remember from my 50th birthday, she took me to Nice. <laughs> I mean, what a brilliant present. She's the older sister. For her 50th, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago that was now. It's only a couple of years ago. Um, I bought her a really, really beautiful bracelet from Tiffany. Because uh, both of us only ever wear silver or white gold. We don't suit gold gold. We like that kind of that beautiful moon colour. So she had her little Tiffany bracelet on and some really sweet earrings, sweet necklace. So we were sitting chat, chat, chatting. And then I suddenly heard this ding, 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 ding sound. It sounded exactly like a bead dropping onto the floor and bouncing and tickling away. So I said, oh, oh, check your bracelet. Have you just dropped a bead? What about your earrings? Did you drop a bead? No, she hadn't dropped a bead. I've got my sweet pea pods in the front window drying. <laughs> and it was so hot that day. The pods were exploding and showering the room with sweet pea seeds. Uh, I've been on my hands and knees and found them all. Anyway, um, I'm digressing. It's just such a lovely time. Uh, I mean, for me, it was kind of like the perfect weekend. I got to go out, out. I got some lovely time with my sister. I got some lovely time with my sister down here outside the shed, chilling with other friends. I got my lovely time at the work party and knowing that as I was leaving the work party, they were getting on with dealing with that hedge was such a relief. Beautiful job. And the, the, and it was the tidying up afterwards. There's not a twig on that path. Um, yes, yeah, so we did our nattering, then had lunch. I was going to cook a Sunday, proper Sunday lunch. I was going to do one of my brassica pies and spuds and beans and all the trimmings. But later on, her cousin, they were having a family barbecue later on. So I said, right, instead of doing Sunday lunch, are you okay with just some soup? She said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Of course she got a courgette and potato soup. <laughs> Anyone who comes to my house for the next, I don't know, six months, you're going to get courgette and potato soup. <laughs> it's a given. So we had our soup, came down here and then just, ah, just lolled in the sunshine, drinking our bubbles, chat, chat, chatting, still chatting. It's funny actually because my, my, my sister and I are very different in some ways. Hear my belly rumbling, and then other ways we're so the same. But one of the ways we're very different is my sister is a much quieter person than me. She's quite shy, but even never mind shyness, she's just a very quiet person. So you know, if I'm staying with her at her home and the rest of the family are around, she's so quiet. I have to get her on her own for a chat, but like on this occasion when we are on our own together yeah non-stop chat 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 and after she went i was thinking oh i meant to ask her about xyz oh i meant to ask her about this i meant to ask i'm gonna have to get on the blower to her because there were some really important things i wanted to ask her about anyway never mind so yeah we had a lovely sunday afternoon and then her cousin came over to pick her up we all hung around a bit longer and then it was time to say bye bye. I hate saying bye, don't cry. Uh, and then I had my first Monday off and had my long sleep. It's just been glorious. It's been a really lovely few days and wow, food for the soul. I've been busy, you know, I after my sister went on Sunday, which is about 4, 35 o'clock, I'm not sure. I went straight home and got straight on with work so it wasn't a day off because I still managed to work before she arrived and after she left. It's kind of what I always do whenever I see anyone. 
but I feel like I'm going to that stage now where yeah I'm just going to take a whole day off not do anything it's been you know what this this is the celebration this weekend has shown me <laughs> what I've been missing and what I need to need to make sure I have it's just it feeds me it really feeds me not necessarily with my sister all the time because we there are a lot of miles between us and the train fare even if you get an advanced ticket and a, a really good saver ticket it's still over a hundred pounds so it's not like you know we can once a month say oh you know come over for the afternoon mm -mm. anyway it's great but let me tell you about our night out out oh it was fab let me just look at the clock because i don't want to um oh yeah 10 minutes um oh, out out and then I must water the garden, and I must water the garden before I drink too much more because oh, um, yay! I haven't been tiddly for ages. Um, her cousin, in law cousin, treated us all. Oh, it's so weird. To a night at the theatre, but it wasn't just any theatre. Now, firstly, I just want to say it. I was. I got a bit tearful, a bit weepy at one point because, and I'm going to go, this is, you know, my emotions are always so close to the surface anyway. I was just so happy to think of, you know, all the actors, the singers, the dancers, the musicians, because it's live music, the lighting engineers, the sound engineers, the set designers, the set builders, all those carpenters, the the wardrobe mistress or master, directors, producers, promoters like our Paul, all of these people are now getting back to their work, getting back to the jobs they love, those jobs that feed them in two ways. It feeds them because it pays them and they can buy food, but it feeds their soul. You know, these are people who are, this is their life, this is what they're born to do. Never mind the government campaigns say, oh, you can change jobs. You go from being a ballet dancer to a data inputter, whatever. Anyway, so I was just, I felt, I felt really moved about that, um, that, you know, people are working again. I have always, always, both as an actor and as a viewer, an audience member, I've always preferred live, so live theatre over TV or film. Um, yeah, I know in film you get all your spectacular effects and what have you, but there is nothing, nothing beats live theatre. Whether you're an audience member or an actor, that frisson, that frisson you can feel of, it's excitement, you know, anything can go wrong, anything can happen, it's live, you don't get a second go. Uh, I loved the sound as everyone was taking their seats, that hubbub, that excited hubbub of the audience. And I so remember it as an actor being backstage, just having my last few maybe bits of physical warm up or whatever, in the wings waiting to go on and you can hear it. And it's just, when you hear that noise of the audience and their excitement, my excitement as an actor comes up and I can't wait, I can't wait to get on that stage and start telling the story uh, so yeah oh I feel honestly this is it's I don't know it's so emotional for me it's not uh, look I've had <laughs> that much Prosecco it's not Prosecco that's making me emotional um, yeah so love life theatre anyway now it's in a particular part of London it's quite special and it's in a very literary part of London and I had originally thought We'd arranged to meet at 6pm, it's curtain up at 7.45. I thought, oh I know, I'm going to go into town earlier, I'm going to take my camera, I'm going to do a little walk around these streets and show you some things. And then, you know, show you the theatre, etc. We were very near to Baker Street, and for anyone who's a Sherlock Holmes fan, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to go and show you 221B Baker Street where Sherlock Holmes lived. Of course he lived there, because he was real, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Uh, anyway, in the end I decided, no, I'm not taking my camera. Uh, 
having a day off of that, but also I just want to completely saturate myself in spending time with my sissio and with her cousin and and obviously the theatre thing. So the theatre we went to was the Little Theatre in Regent's Park and it's an open air theatre. Oh, you know, theatre is special anyway, but open air theatre, it's just there's something so magical about it. I'm going to try and describe the setting to you because it really is magical. The thing about Regent's Park, I would say, amongst all our parks in London, in some ways it's sort of the most formal, the most pretty, uh, and it also, for me, it always feels like the most intimate of the parks. It's a biggish park, you know, right at the top end you've got London Zoological Society, London Zoo, it's bordered by the canal, which canal, it's gone out of my brain for now. Uh, but yeah, it feels, it's sort of, on the one hand, it's quite, the layout is quite formal, but it does feel intimate somehow. Um, so that immediately makes it feel special. The Like I said, the park is quite big and there's a sort of an outer road circuit around it and there's a big lake and the zoological society and then there's what's called inner circle it's another little road so cars can go round it but then within it it's it's pedestrians only it's quite formal sort of gardens fountains there's a little allotment off to one side but there's a lot of trees a lot of trees so you feel really sort of just enclosed and in this little special pocket of loveliness. So we'd arranged to meet early, uh, to meet at six, so that we could have a picnic. And it was an amazingly beautiful evening. So warm. It felt like one of those summer evenings again. And that possibly made it even more special because, as I was just saying a minute ago, we've missed those beautiful summer evenings this year because it's been so grey and and even when it hasn't been raining it has felt grey and damp so it's just this beautiful clear blue sky the last of the sunshine as the sun was dipping behind trees there were little pockets of sunshine and dappled light so we spread out our blankets and had our got our picnic out which uh, my sister Nikki and her cousin had put together it was all lovely I'm they just said just turn up you don't have to bring anything <laughs> what a treat little glass of Prosecco each it was just gorgeous and it, it, just that instant feeling of being relaxed and just open to having the loveliest time it's gorgeous so the theatre itself when you're in this little circle of formal gardens and paths and what have you. It's sort of off to one side, there's a lot of shrubbery and trees. It's a little tiny entrance to the theatre. You, you really have no idea that there's a theatre there. You can't really see anything from the outside. And it's an amphitheatre, so it's a semicircle, sort of cone-shaped semicircle. But rather than being built into the side of a hill, as the Greeks and Romans would have done, it's actually, it's kind of ugly in a way, it's a kind of concrete, concrete bowl that's been made, but it's been disguised very cleverly. So like I say, there's trees everywhere, and when you come in, you actually come into, okay, let's say that's the stage, and here's the bowl of the amphitheatre. The entrance is here, so you're sort of coming in under this big structure but it's beautifully disguised because there's all this, this tumbling foliage greenery down here and it's all hung with sort of fairy lights so they're twinkling because by now it's dusk and the little, the little path through the trees to come down there are little sort of fairy lights, little lights all the way along so the minute you come in it feels like I'm getting emotional again it just feels like this really special fairy magical place um, oh my goodness, Vivi, get a grip. It's just a theatre. Um, 
so and then underneath there there are little tables and chairs so you can get a drink a little bit of something to eat if you like and and you can hear already the hub hub people are getting excited excuse me um so you walk in there and like i say it's because it's I think we went in at about 20 past, 25 past 7, so we're getting to dusk at this time of year. So all the little lights are twinkling. A little bit of a breeze was picking up, so the trees were starting to... A little bit, really big tall trees. Uh, so we went to the bar and got some more drinks to take in with us. Go through a little archway and then phew, you come out. You come out into this bowl of seating. And there's the stage in front of us. And it's just it's just the most it's just the most gloriously exciting frisson filled uh, feeling. So we took our seats, uh, we had great seats. I didn't have oh, that's my alarm clock. What was it? No, it's not. Um, hang on a tick. Let me shut that off. That's telling me to stop speaking, but I don't want to stop speaking about this because it's lovely. Um, we had great seats because we were kind of ha ha halfway up the bowl, but where the entrance was, I didn't have to go down, down or up any steps. We came through. Boom, there are our seats right on the edge. Fantastic. So we got our seats and I just had a moment of listening listening to everyone. Everyone's so excited. And then at one point I sort of just looked around and there was a little bit of lighting on the set. Because like I say, you know, we're, we're out in the open, up above us, it's just sky beyond its trees and then this beautiful set. So it's a little bit lit. So as I, I had a little look around and it's just this bank of grinning faces, just very slightly lit because of the sort of spill from the stage lights. It was just perfect. So, so perfect. <sighs> oh, I forgot to say, the show was Carousel, which I've never seen before. And I was expecting a jolly romp, you know, like Oklahoma, same writers, composers. Uh, <laughs> It's not, oh my goodness, it's quite a dark, it's quite a dark tone to it, a dark theme to it. Um, but my oh my, it was stunning. The choreography was gorgeous. It had a slight nod to choreog choreography of the past. Um, it was brilliant. The chorus, the ensemble, who are made up mostly of their sort of dancers, singers, fantastic the lead the lead parts oh my goodness their voices their voices are so beautiful um i cried twice watching it it was just it was it was so perfect i was completely immersed completely immersed in watching it and there was just a little moment in the first half when I sort of stepped out of that immersion for one moment and just clocked where I was. And I looked up at this inky blue, almost black night sky with a few stars beginning to twinkle. And they're very, very, very black, the silhouettes of the trees. And I just thought, wow, I'm sitting outside in the middle of London and I'm no longer, I'm, no, I'm not here, I'm somewhere else. I'm transported, I don't know where I am. I am in fairyland, the fairies have taken me away. <laughs> I sound like the fairies have taken me away now, don't I? But yeah, um, it's hard to articulate, I guess, isn't it? But there was this also a moment towards the end of the first half that I clocked. Um, it's like a really moving moment. And then there's just this moment of quiet. And in that exact moment, there was a big through the trees. Oh, sent a shiver down my spine. I was like, wow, ooh. It's like the gods up there are having a hand in this production. We got to the interval. We were chatting excitedly away, saying, oh, it's wonderful. Da, da. And I said, did any of you clock that moment when he does such and such? I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give anything away. And they went, oh, the wind in the trees. They both clocked it as well. Wonderful. 
just sublime. If you ever get the chance, not necessarily Regent's Park, but I would say, you know, open air theatre, it's it's just such a wonderful experience. Go a lot, go and s let's get back to supporting our actors and musicians and set builders and wardrobe people and designers and directors and all these people who've had no work for months and months and months and months on end. If you can afford it, you know, it's not always cheap to go to the theatre. This is a much of a cheaper way to go to the theatre than going to the West End, I should say. But yeah, treat yourself if you ever can. Open air theatre, especially at this time of year, end of August, beginning of September, when the, when the nights are darker and it gets dark sooner, adds to that free song. Take a blanket with you to put over your knees and take a blanket with you to wrap around your shoulders and you'll forget you're outside. And every now and again you'll look up and see the stars and think, wow, that's the best ceiling that any theatre could have, isn't it? Oh, joy, joy, joy. Anyway, so there we go. That's a little catch-up of my weekend. Going out, out. Oh, it's so good. You know, in some ways, well, in every way, I'm glad I didn't take my camera with me because I would have been preoccupied by creating a video, walking around those streets, showing you things and trying to show you the park and trying to show you the theatre. I would have been completely preoccupied by trying to bring you a video. And you know what? In a way, a, a video would never, it could never capture that magical quality. Um, a video can't ever capture what goes on inside me, the feelings I end up with. So in, in, in many ways I would rather yeah, leave the camera and then later on talk about it, try and draw a picture for you, try and paint a picture for you so that you can immerse yourself in your own imagination of what I experienced and maybe just feel a little bit of it via me rather than via the lens of my camera which really wouldn't have done it justice so i think on that note uh what's the time just keeping an eye on things i'm going to gobble up this little bit i feel i'm feeling really naughty today no not that kind of naughty um i feel like you know what i should do i should just go and get the garden watered then that's off my mind because it really needs, oh poor plants, they really need a watering. Get the whole garden watered, then I can properly relax. Come back in here, I'm going to, pardon me, mull of this Prosecco and have a little lie down. You're not going to have to do first though. Sweep all the soil, it's turned to dust almost, but it's dropped from my onions, get that all swept off. Oh, just chill because there is a beautiful breeze today. La vita is bella. It really is. Life really is beautiful. If we let it be. If we allow ourselves to be in these moments, it really is beautiful. I know, I need to take a leaf out of my own book, don't I? Stop rushing around. Just stop and smell the coffee, the roses, whatever it is. Smell the air. All right, lovelies. So, <laughs> excuse me. Thank you for joining me on the sofa today. Um, I really, really, really wanted to tell you about uh, that weekend, especially about the theatre. I'm sorry if that was self-indulgent. Maybe none of you are interested. I don't know. I bet a few of you are. But um, I didn't mean it as a self-indulgence. I just wanted to share because it was so special. And, you know, I'm... I, I, I realise in life, you know, I'm so fortunate in so many ways. So if ever I can, whenever I can, I want to share that. All right, lovelies, cheers. Cheers to everything. Back to the garden, back to the watering, back to a slight moment of reality that I can come in here and dream, dream big. I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. <clears throat> Probably back in the garden. But until then, 
and may you dream big too. May you take your moments, I was going to say of nothingness, it's not of nothingness, take your moment to be still and let it all float around, let whatever come and float and enjoy it. Bye for now everyone.